while President Jacob Zuma waded into South Africa's churning labor crisis with a call for striking miners to return to work and for CEOs to freeze their pay amidst industrial unrest and bloodshed that threatens to derail the nation's economy. Joining us for more insight on this is Karima Brown. She is a CNBC, uh, an anchor at CNBC Africa. Uh, Karima, of course, we've got the headlines doing the rounds. And on the business day, Zuma leads bid for social pact to save South Africa's freight image amidst uh, mine strikes. Now, you've got that doing the rounds, and I don't know if you caught the tail end of Mark's conversation, but he, not too convinced, I mean, he's saying we've, uh, we've not seen government take the lead, we've uh, seen them in, uh, unable to deliver in the past, so that conviction is certainly not there. What are you reading into what's come to the fore here? Well, I think what the summit of yesterday was about, as you remember, this is the second follow-up. We had a meeting similar to this about a week and a half ago, and yesterday's meeting is significant for a number of reasons. One, if we look at the players who attended the meeting, it included a, a, a range of players from business, but if you look at the trade union component, you will find that it had Fedusa there, it had Kosato, which is the African National Congress's ally, but it also had Amco there, one of the key players in the mining industry, particularly in the uh, platinum sector, although Amco doesn't have majority uh, representation and it's not formally recognized by the labor law regime in terms of those who can negotiate, they were present. And I think that is quite significant. So what you're seeing at the moment is certainly an attempt from the different parties that make up South Africa's social pact um, to come together and present a series of measures meant to address not just the image of South Africa as an investment destination, but also to deal in a very real way with the key issues. If you look at the, the measures that have come out, there are three sets of measures. They're both old and new. The one is to restore um, stability to the labor market, which means that um, people need to return to um, existing structures of bargaining. We need to deal with the violence. Mm -hmm. The second thing, of course, is to look at law and order measures um, to tighten up those uh, workers, for example, at some mines who were stoned, uh, who wanted to go to work. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we're going to see is an increase in action there. And the third thing, which I think is the more longer underpinning issues, is a series of measures to deal with the social conditions of mine workers. Mm -hmm. Um, Karima, it's very interesting that AMCU is at the table. I mean, it seems to have come from nowhere. So, I mean, uh, a fair play to them for uh, appealing to the workers' uh, needs and, and getting a place at the table. That's the first thing. Second thing is, yeah, well done for everybody for getting together and, and actually talking about it. And I'm just looking back in history now. And if you go back to 1970s Britain, there was something called the social contract, and you, you, you probably know about this. It was a policy by the lab, Labour government of Harold Wilson in 1970s Britain. 1970s Britain wasn't great because of the oil price shock. It was to be the foundation on which the government could introduce a stronger budget in order to control the high inflation and growing government spending of the era, which uh, Edward Heath's previous government had failed to do. And it talked about food subsidies, freeze on rent increases. In a certain way, what I'm seeing here that's happened in the last few days is very similar to what happened in Britain in the 70s. Hopefully it will continue. Yes, I think what is important, if you look, for example, on the call by the president that there should be wage freezes for top executives, what is interesting here, of course, is that the president hasn't just addressed himself to the private sector, but also to government, to public sectors. Um, Minister for Economic Development, Ibrahim Patel, was speaking on national radio today and last night on television stations about the fact that each constituency will now have to go back and canvas um, the idea of the, of the wage freezes and carry their constituencies with. Um, and I think the, it brings us to the question of leadership, Lindsay. Um, I think that the criticism against government for acting slowly is valid, but I don't think government is the only partner in the social contract. I think we do need to look at what business has done. We do need to look at what labor has done to provide leadership um, at a time when the country needs it most. Um, one of your previous speakers um, um, spoke about the fact that we have on our books uh, something like 550 billion um, sitting on, on balance sheets. And the key question is why are local investors not confident enough to invest in the economy, particularly if you look at uh, the comments, for example, from the trade minister, Mr. Vince Cable, who was here recently, mm -hmm. saying that Britain certainly is taking a long-term view, looking at South Africa as a sound invest in investment destination. So I think in as much as government has some questions to answer in terms of delivery, so does business and so does labor. Of course, business needs that support network to make those investments lucrative for them at the end of the day. It's all about return on investment, where there's been this criticism of government being slow to the draw. I mean, you've mentioned and touched on the fact that we're looking at a fast-tracking 
for example, of long-term uh, social development, uh, you know, uh, developmental agenda. What exactly are we looking at? Because this all culminates in the Coordinated Infrastructure Summit, right? Yes. Um, Alicia, what's going to happen tomorrow is that you have the Presidential Coordinating uh, um, Infrastructure um, Commission that will be having a second summit here in Santon at the Convention Centre. And my understanding is that a series of announcements will be made regarding the uh, targeting, particularly of mining towns like uh, Marikana in Rustenburg, like Klaxdorp, like Coltonville. Um, now, you know, under the present regime, the, um, the Act um, and the Charter uh, compels companies to come to to the party in uh, putting on the table conditions around, uh, um, you know, social conditions for wages. And what we see here is that um, more announcements will be made tomorrow on uh, what will be done together with business and local municipalities to try and fast track some of those um, underlying issues. You know, the Kusatu conference held in September called for a second commission of inquiry into Marikana, specifically targeting the social conditions of mine workers. And what appears to have happened happened in the summit is that there's been buy-in from labor and from business that we need to do this faster. Of course, the state of municipalities is key to whether this can happen. And we know that many municipalities, particularly in a place like the Northwest, has in fact been placed under administration. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the um, uh, summit tomorrow at the Infrastructure Council actually lays out. Um, there's talk about a, a crack team that's going to look at um, how this is going to happen. Uh, we know that South Africa used to have a migrant labor system and we had single sex hostels. That was of course done away with, but now we have um, you know, mushrooming um, informal settlements as mine workers bring their families with. And very often um, the payout allowance that miners get uh, for the accommodation is spent on renting shacks. So you have a, a, an unintended consequence um, you know, in terms of, of doing away with the policy that was frowned upon, but in its place you have you know, more social problems than you've had before. Yeah.